manage all the energy in the universe, you'd have to be a civilization of about six and a half a caliber. Um, no, six and, and a half caliber to manage the universe. God is in this picture. Um, and the question arises, uh, does he have infinite intelligence or is it something less than infinity? Okay, so... The Our civilization ties six and so over. There is infinity. Um, I, I consider this top corner where the horizontal line that comes across and, and the beginning of time when intersect, that little intersection, I call that God's corner. Right here. Because it's infinite, uh, he knows everything, and, uh, and created the universe, which is essentially... So a civilization that can manage everything. goes from right to left, and so over in here, the time would be about uh, something in the neighborhood of 15 billion years. And so you can see that it takes quite a bit of time to, for these things to happen. Uh, just the, the vertical separation between um, Earth and where we are now in terms of, of producing energy, uh, that represents, represents quite, a, quite a span of years. And so it also gives you some idea that uh, you know, we're not going to get very far very fast unless we really wanted to do it. So, now I want to try to give you a little flavor of physicist thinking. And um, I got intrigued with uh, Kaku's presentation. Um, now, it turns out that the starting point for Einstein's work was really the Pythagoras uh, theory. And probably most of you know what that is. Namely, if you have a right triangle up here, um, you take the, the side here and make a square out of it. You call you, that area of that square based on that one side plus the area based on the other side is equal to the hypotenuse, the long side of the triangle, and the total area. So these two areas here of the opposite exactly. side equals the area of the hypotenuse. Okay, so you can just say that eight squared then is equal to um, y squared and x squared plus. Okay, now the big point of that is only that it's two dimensions there. X and Y are just two dimensions. And uh, it's a planar kind of approach. The cube. Okay, so now how do you bring this up into ten dimensions? And it will show you how it's, it's being done. Ten dimensions. Okay, here is a three-dimensional case. And the so cube. you do the same you. thing. You ah. X, Y, and Z for the zeroth. And you, you take the tangent together, and you get the length of that long line X, extending y, from and one Z. corner to the furthest opposite corner. And um, so that's that's the relationship that in the, is there. Now, if you want to go to four dimensions like uh, Einstein did, well, you simply throw in another term. And in this case, it was t squared. And so now he has four dimensions. He doesn't know whether physically or not it means anything, but he's got four dimensions. And, Two squares. Um, and so he, since he doesn't know what to call the resultant, he just calls it space-time. Time. You don't know yeah. what that resultant is all it's about. nothing like that. It's not true. Now, if you want to go to ten dimensions, I tried to make up a, a quick way to do that, but what it means is you have ten terms, and each of them are squared terms, and you can substitute all other kinds of equations in each of the ten terms, but uh, you set it up so it's ten-dimensional, and that's what these physicists believe that they're doing now. Um, I'd like to hark back to say that for um, the, the type two civilization, uh, Bob Dean uh, tweaked me uh, on, on that kind of uh, situation, and um, I, I agree on his statement that um, there is an existence of a type two civilization, maybe it's even a type three, 
uh, according to what we saw there with the sun. So uh, there is very great high intelligence kicking no, in the universe. That no, that intelligence is not equal to the ones in the hands. The physicists but they can come up with a shit. theory of everything. And, now, mind you, what has happened here is everything is based on the Pythagoras theorem. Exactly. And, and the math guys like it because they get a plus and minus out of every square. Exactly. So when you take the square root, it's either plus or minus. Right. And so if you have energy, it can be either plus or minus. And so it makes a neat thing, but mind so you, geometry. it's just geometry. There you go. More. Just geometry. Exactly. It's all geometry. Okay, uh, here are the things so that a square makes uh, the a physicists cube. are trying to do. A cube plug, tilt that makes uh, a hexagon. The ten dimensional theory. Uh, it's, it's hard for me to read it. People don't. Uh, can you all see it? And I think okay. um, messed up himself by putting yeah, me on the... Yeah, the first one. The speed of light. That's Einstein. Not such so a thing Einstein blocked really. himself up for right at the beginning. Exactly. Now, the rest of them are what the physicists want to include to make up the ten. And uh, you go down those and you come to quantum theory. Listen, that, listen that to this shit again. What he said about Einstein. Geometry. Nothing more. Just geometry. Right. Okay. Uh, here are the things that um, the physicists are trying to do to plug uh, their ten-dimensional theory. Uh, it's it's hard for me to read it. I don't know. Can you all see it? Okay. Physicists challenge um, the theory of everything. Yeah, space-time is the first one, and that's, that's Einstein, so this, Einstein blocked himself up. The strong nuclear the force, now, the, rest the electromagnetic are, force, the, physicists the gravitational the force, the, the weak nuclear force, and, uh, the quantum theory, the string the theory. Host, uh, you come to quantum theory, that, that has given the physicists a lot of trouble because uh, that essentially says that uh, their systems are going to be digitized. Uh, the string theory, they, yeah. they, they need something else to explain um, how things get started and they're exactly. hoping that um, some sort of string will show up <laughs> in, in the cosmos. Well, uh, we got an EMV that is capable of making strings, so they have no problem that way. I have a question of whether they think it's appropriate to incorporate it. Exactly. But, but they, uh, right they, now, there, there's no realization as to why the uh, um, EMV type of thing should be recognized. And, uh, the data are there. It's an open secret. Well, because but, you don't uh, know what I know. Uh, I guess the question of... Unfortunately. Well, I know it, but don't bother me with facts. Well, I can show um, you the hand. No, it's all about that. The, uh, this the thing is reality too high. is the hand, the reptilian deal behind that. And, um, it's hard for me to read it. Okay. All right, you can go through those and you see it. And, all right, there, there are three women that are omitted from this, and I want to give them credit. One is my wife, who has spent a lot of, uh, Long some hours while I've been trying to put a lot of this stuff together. Uh, another is Judy Donnelly in Washington, D.C., who was my first president of the California, California uh, Civil Engineer Society. And uh, she, this was an education foundation, she became president of the Education Foundation. And the third is uh, Casey Dawkins, Marilyn Casey Dawkins, who uh, has had a touch of her in, in most everything that I presented. Okay, take home thoughts. I hope you can read that. And uh, uh, running out of time. Okay, a closing thought by Stephen Hawking. Uh, he's claiming here that the only one would be if we can figure out something for everything, theory for everything and that we know the mind to God. Um, I 
think that's a little overstatement, but it's in the right direction. And here's my idea of where we are. Um, we have a little rover here looking under Adirondack, and but in the meantime, why we got this huge EMV in the background with a laser pointing down to the surface, and I think that's about contrast the, the technology. Okay, lights.